Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. Um, hey, everybody! Welcome to Beyond the Letter. <laughs> yeah. We just started. Usually, we talk for ten minutes. Beforehand. I know. All right. Well, I mean, well, no, I I did that because we're about to get into something juicy. So I want to make Let's sure, go. like, hey, we're ready. We ready to go? Let's are go, we, baby. Are we gunning? Are we gunning? Gunning, All bro. Right. We got my brother Will Chung in the house. Let's On go. Young Jose. Oh, what's up, my, what's my goodness? This is my boy right wait, here. Wait, what did you just say right now? It's my chingu. Dang What's it. up? It's between us, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's sorry, man. Well, Get that Google <laughs> Translate out, my boy. Dang it. <laughs> um, we got Will Chung in the house today, as always. My brother, who everybody in the Beyond the Letter community loves bro, I to love have being on. Here. Love the viral sent the, vi- the viral of viral. I right was in here. Nashville the in the mall going up an escalator. And some girl was like, "No, be Stop. Will." I was like, well, "She's like, she's like, I'm from a, bu- I go to Abundant Living. Yes, I'll be my watching girl. the podcast." And she's like, yeah. "I'm here in town." It was your homie, Nancy. Yeah, that was Alex. So Alexandra booked oh, okay. uh, a trip to Nashville just to go to the conference, and she sends me a picture of you. And I'm oh, like, the conference you were speaking at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah, and, and she, she was like, like, "I just I ran into." Bro, I thought only white people oh. go to that. <laughs> she's uh, she's African American. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I knew if they went to a bunch, they were bro. <laughs> Alexandra, she travels with no her all the time. Way. She's one of her little travel buddies. Oh, well, yeah. now I know yeah. what she's talking about, but yeah. I, I just I didn't, I didn't know anybody that was white that went, went to those conferences. Well, she was there, bro. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to BTL right there. Dang. Hey. Yeah, yeah, you get recognized. Recognized out in Nashville. In Nashville that's crazy. Well, I made this wild. I made this wild <laughs> discovery about remixes. So you go to the post. Yes. And then you say, "See all remixes," and then it shows you. Everybody who's reacted, it tracks any time someone's used that audio. Yeah, and so oh, what? So there's some. I, mean, I feel like me and Jermaine are boomers. But Wait, hold yeah. up. No, I, I'm cutting edge. It turns out. Well, I didn't know you could do this on Instagram, but it's yes. the same idea on TikTok. If you press the sound, that it shows all the videos now, that use you, the no, sound. No, I knew. It's, yeah, and yes. I knew you could do that on TikTok. Yeah. but 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 you can't see the. Sh- you can't see how many. How many people remixed it on TikTok? Yeah, though. you can only oh, see how many people use the sound. The sound, but. Instagram, if someone like shares it with a reaction or whatever, you can see their stuff. So yeah. there's this list of with Ashley and Will and all that, like all these people doing reaction videos to your guys' oh. stuff that you no can idea. see. Yeah, I mean so it's it's in the twenties so of millions. The, yeah, you so know? the main post has like over eight million. Yeah. Just the main one, but you go to see all remixes and then you see all of the remixes. So the original has seven million, but then there's some that have four million. Two million. Wow! And it's everybody who's oh, reacted to this. Crazy. But some of them go I crazy. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. So can I say that too? Because so. yeah, yeah. I could look in it. Yeah, because okay. I'm not even on any special. Oh, access. it's public. Anyone can pull it out. You just say uh, show remixes or something. see all something. remixes on the yeah. three dots. <laughs> That's that is wild. <laughs> wild yeah. situation. Yeah. That scares me. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I know. So I got really like, nervous when I saw my face. And it's mostly just somebody responding like. Yeah. You know, silent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just to get their face on pointing. it. Pointing. Right, right, right. Well, because right. they know it's viral content, so they know if they just show their reaction, yeah, it's already that their page will yeah. get uh, views, you know, oh, so uh, when it's already viral. It's crazy. So we got that Will in the house. Crazy. We got Sanaz in the house, Hi. my sister in law. And then we got Verlon, a.k.a. Jermaine, a.k.a. Baker. With yes, the oh. iced coffee with ice that he just shook right next I know. to the microphone. He's like this. <laughs> hey, you know, I need to turn my mic up because I, I can't even. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like down below, like you can't hear yourself. I yeah. can hear you good. Oh, that's good. As long as that's as long as that's no, good. Yeah, yeah. I can't hear myself. Oh, okay. Well. No, you sound great. Can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. there we are. We got Alize in the room, Stapping Flicks, Alex in the room on the cameras, Nancy in the room, Nancifying everything. Glow mm-hmm. glowed up. Glowing everything Some up. Fire boots on too. We got Gabe in the house whose wife recently con- convinced him to start wearing Nikes because he was a Vans guy. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Gabe's married? So, show your foot. <laughs> thought you were like 17, dog. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. crazy. You're married, Look bro? at that. That's look at that. Wild. The blazer low. If you're on YouTube, look at that. He's wearing Nikes. <laughs> I cramped up. I cramped up. <laughs> yeah, I cramped up. Drink water, bro. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have the clip, though. We got the clip. Okay. Oh, okay. And then we got Andy on the on the ones and twos. All right, everybody. First, does is there much audio on it, or is it a lot of reading? Do they talk? Up, they, they narrate it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I didn't know if we had to set it up for everybody. All right, then let's just watch it and see what Nancy's talking about in L.A. Oh <laughs> I've seen this. First okay. Christian nightclub here in L.A. Right now, Christians have nowhere to have fun. Like, 
nah. we not going to normal clubs. We not going to bars. No, we we ain't. ain't going to parties. No, we ain't. So Christians need a space to turn up in a wholesome environment that yes, allows us to just be <coughs> united for Jesus. Okay, <laughs> this is the start of a humongous movement. Okay, there will be Christian movement. spaces in, on every corner representing fun <laughs> that we can no, have stop. without stop. weed, stop. drinks, and other worldly stuff. Mm. So right now, this one is coming to LA. Please like mm. and share this post so people from LA can see this and we can turn up. Okay. And they're Turn dead up. serious. Hey. Okay, I need some context. They're dead Jermaine. serious. Jermaine found that. Not suddenly. Yeah, I sent it to Nancy yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was like, hey, hilarious. this is like, yeah. this sounds like Well, I thing. saw this same exact thing in Nashville. There's yeah. six guys mm-hmm. doing the same, and they're getting crazy yep. flack. <laughs> uh, so wait, so they're, okay, yeah. they're doing pop-up club nights. Is that no. what it is? No. It's not a pop-up, it's a club. It's a club. It's a club. Not pop-up, it's permanent. They're, they're getting a club, a nightclub in L.A., uh-huh. and they want to... Have a have a Let Christian nightclub, and so what they don't share in all that because they're trying to bait the people who like clubbing. Sure. What they're not sharing is, and they say it in the caption, mind you, and she's over here commenting and responding to everybody because you know they're getting a lot of hate for it. Yeah. I would never. And she goes, You're well, like let me clarify. There's no bad dancing. There's no bad music. It'll be worship music, and it just sounds <laughs> it sounds even worse. Well, how do you police that though? You know, like. Well, well, it's how I'm you going gonna to, how you like, gonna shake your butt to a worship song? It just don't make sense. So that's how I but think I they police it. Is they're gonna no, but she if said, they're not playing worship. No, they're gonna said, be playing like hip. Like if you play Lecrae or whatever else, like they're yeah. calling that word. You know, they're gonna be playing hip hop. Are there and clips? Stuff like that. Are like, there clips of the actual? Yes, events? I yeah, said yeah, Gabriel see, one. See, I said Gabriel see, one, and Gabriel's the, um, Gabriel's joke was. <laughs> let me see. <laughs> this is so funny. Gabriel goes. It opened November 11th, okay. and, and the it, one in Nashville. I'm looking uh, at it. Right and now. it's actually crazy. It's so revealing about just even the nightclub culture because, if and this is Here I don't even know how to say this the right way, but I'll just say it. Like when you're doing that stuff sober, it sounds and looks ridiculous. Like if you're just like dancing crazy. I got it. I got a video. You just of people look dancing. ridiculous. It's like why do we I feel got, ridiculous? I found it on TikTok. Yeah. I got a people. S- I, got, I got one of them dancing. Send it to them. I am, I am, I am. This is the one in Nashville. It opened up November and they're 11th. Pop, they're, they're dancing and going, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, why do we feel ridiculous? Oh, I know why. Because it's not supposed to be happening like this. Listen, like, it's like one of those things where uh, I, my, my whole 20s was spent in the club. All the time. Yes, we, yes, yes, I, we know. I, well, we know. No, 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 I'm not saying yeah. they know. I'm saying like, yes, yes. I know. So I, I spent a lot of time. With them. You know, I just feel that if I were to go to a Christian club, just my hips would start twerking accidentally. <laughs> and just all the of a sudden, memory. just muscle memory. That's and I'd so be like, funny. okay, all of a sudden I'm just doing things from back in the day. But like, I don't know. Like, I'm just right. in this presence. And, you know, yeah. it's just we're thinking about Jesus instead of, you know, right. to the window, to the wall. Like, it's right. just a little bit different. I'm really huh. trying to think about this. You know what I'm I saying? Gotta, I got to see the clip. Did you okay, say, yeah, I, it's I, coming. I, 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 I want to see. Yeah, like, yeah. of what is happening yeah. in the room. It's like yeah, a yeah. worship it's service. Like a, <laughs> no, it's like, no, no, no. They're like, like, I want to see. Think, like, of like, think of like a junior high dance circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think of a private school uh, Yo, yeah, prom. Ser- yeah, no, oh seriously. Oh, my gosh. Seriously, yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to make fun of anyone, but. Okay, let me see this. Can you go full screen, Andy, so we can see it? Oh, never mind. Okay. You can't. Okay, restart it. See, like, and that's not worship music, by the way. It's Christian hymn. Non-alcoholic partying. Yes. This, this, I mean, it's... This feels like a, like a Christian a Christian wedding, like a dry Christian Correct. wedding. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm well, getting the vibe. Like I mean, a most dry... dry Christian weddings I've been to are pretty boring. But yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but I get what you're saying. I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Thoughts, Will? <laughs> <laughs> You're in a lot of those like obtuse Christian circles, you know, like <laughs> as much oh, as you are. No, 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 no. He's like, that's how we met. This is the newest. This is just where that's how we met, dog. Uh, see now. I don't see anything wrong with it. It just yeah. in my initial response is just corny. You know, right. I mean? right. yeah. yeah, but I don't want to hate on it because it is what it is, and they look for, like they're having fun. Yeah, and I always you know? I try not to criticize what I don't understand. Yeah, and so for me, it's kind of hard to understand. But that's why I had to see a clip. It reminds me of like when you go to a wedding, it's a Christian wedding, or the couple getting married are in ministry, or they're prominent church folks, and there's no alcohol, but the dance floor. People sometimes have fun. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to see what she meant by turn up because usually turn up means like get down. Yeah. Muscle memory yeah, coming muscle back. Muscle memory coming back. I think she's a Gen Z, so they're using, I mean, that's just their lingo, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. For us, older millennials, turn up to us was 
you know, little well, John, yeah. like you're getting absolutely thrashed. I don't think turn up means the same thing nowadays. Sure. I think now it's just a, a an idiom for like yeah, we having part, a good time. Have fun. Yeah, we, we've you had know, like, we've had those. Um, Christian hip hop concerts at our church yeah. before, and the, all the kids and young adults are jumping up and down, and it's a lot of fun um, in that in that scenario in that environment. I just don't care for um, trying to make something that comes from like or is 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 meant to be a sinful thing, and just trying to say like, okay, instead of taking people out of that environment and putting them in a healthy environment, let's try to make the sinful environment healthy, yeah. and then blending, you know, so 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 it's almost like, okay, you love to club, so you could still club, just club over here. I just feel like the closer we get to Christ, Christ begins to transform our heart to not care. Yeah. Uh, like I have no desire to go into a club and to be club because, because God transformed my heart. So I don't have a desire to go there. I don't need to now. Now it's not like, oh, yes, finally, I can do yeah. the things that I wanted to do and I can do them in a holy way because now we're going to be singing about Jesus yeah. instead of, you know, my tail feather or whatever. So yeah. I don't know. It's just I mean, it's it's funny. It's cute. I'm sure and it's I, fun and I think for those the perspective kids, but... in your case, Sinaz, is like you had a big radical shift in your salvation mm -hmm. like you were like r you were completely unsaved yeah you grew up in a in a muslim dominated home in terms of the religion but not practice but right. so you were like smoking, was you were smoking cigarettes yeah. you were you know like you were you were wilding out so i think for you it would be much more hard to stomach a side of this because you're like I did all that in its worst form it, yeah whereas maybe someone who's 20 or 21 who doesn't have too many experiences clubbing maybe they did it once or twice when they were unsaved but like now they are and they're like I'm, I just don't want to lose out on my 20s and I want to have fun still they're really not seeing anything wrong with uh why can't we all come together and create a club like atmosphere which to agree, I understand. Like if you were grown up, if, like if you're brought up in a super sheltered home, mm -hmm. and you know you're trying to have a, not necessarily even a world's view of fun, but just like what could fun be? And yeah. Like oh, music, it's dancing. Like you're saying, the concerts we used to put on it, and our and our mindset for the concerts was we were trying to show the youth that Jesus could be fun too. Sure. Um, in processing their salvation, what we weren't trying to do is say you could have fun every week by holding a concert every week, which could be what they're trying to exhibit a little bit more. Like every week you could come and have fun with this thing or whatever. Whereas like, um, yeah, I mean, to your point, Will, like you're talking about like, oh, just, I don't know that it's fun or corny. I think it would be interesting because they say they have one in L.A. <laughs> Maybe we have whoever leads that. They should I'll come go, on. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go undercover. <laughs> Put Nancy, Nancy on. Nancy's on, on. She'll get married. She's on. She's She's on. find her husband. Well, here's my question about that, too, though, yeah. because the, the, the traditional Hollywood or uh, downtown whatever – uh, nightclub. Where is it? D dancing is only a portion of what you're doing there. Right. You're there to drink. You're there. Some people are there to do drugs. You're there to grind up on somebody. Connect you're there to yeah, hook up with and somebody. Not innocently. You're trying to yeah. All of those things. Those. That's. It's a dancing is just such a small portion yeah. of what clubbing is. So what are you doing at these quote unquote, unquote Christian clubs? is dancing all you're providing because if dancing is all you're providing it's going to get very boring very quickly so is there uh, yeah. like what what else is there what's the connection if if you're trying to evangelize to young people by having this club or providing a place, there has to be more than just dancing because that's just not yeah. going to be enough. And my only issue with because to Will's to maybe Will's juice point, boxes, like well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, to Will's point, and like that's really wise. I don't want to criticize something I don't understand. Sure. What I think I do understand about it because another post that I've seen is the church has that needs to do a better job at reaching young people, and this is that thing. This is that. So it's like okay, it's a movement. Yeah, it's a movement that's that is needed because something's not reaching the young adults of our. Something's not reaching the the younger the the mm -hmm. older Gen Zs that are closer to millennial whatever. And at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, why do we enhance our worship experiences the way we do? And it's if it's not to like show excellence and show that concert esque experience and that show of love towards God, right? 
with the lights, with the great audio, with the great musicians, with great singers. We do all these things for a standard weekly worship experience sure. for someone to engage in a high quality communal environment. So then you're telling me we're, it's not like we're worshiping in pews and singing hymns a cappella anymore, mm -hmm. which that's its own dope vibe, right? But like, yeah. but, but we're doing all these things to enhance a worship experience. And then you're saying the church is missing this, which yeah. is what? A, a, a yeah. worship experience past 11 p.m. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, so yeah. then you have to say, what markers is the church not hitting in their worship experience? Because that's, for me, the sell. Yeah. And th there's nothing there. Like, so, you know, that's my only criticism of it yeah. is, okay, take that same energy, and those same young adults are just really reserved during worship, just clapping their hands and lifting their hands when you ask them. That's all you I get out of that yeah. there, right? So I mean, it's just this crazy paradigm. But to play the devil's advocate, I mean, I, I I'm, you know... I think it's difficult in the fact that if I'm if I'm a kid in their 20s today, 21, 22, like we've talked about it before, like there's no town hall that exists for them. They're, most of them are going to college online. Uh, most of them, many of them are working online and not every church, believe it or not, is great at creating a community atmosphere that has some type of system of discipleship or small group. So if I'm a Christian 21-year-old, 22-year-old, 23-year-old, let me ask you, where where am I meeting and fellowshipping with other believers? Where would it be happening? Yeah. What if my church doesn't do that? And believe it or not, more churches don't do that than we think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So where is it happening? So I think in this case, this is one of those things where we're like, we would all, we could all easily sound like, um, and I use this as an idiom of a joke, not the actual generation, but you could sound like an okay boomer mm -hmm. where they're, the young people, unfortunately, are trying to solve a problem that the church is supposed to solve. Okay. And so they're going based off of their own youthfulness and their own lack of experience and lack of wisdom. They're saying, hey, this is the best possible fix that we could do is, you know, we have no town hall. We have no place where we can meet other Christians. We have no safe place. We have no place of accountability because they could easily say, because the argument's true, you could be a Christian and go to a nightclub. Like, just for you to go to a nightclub doesn't mean you're not a Christian. Right, right. So, but they would say, but then there's temptation. You know, you may you may end up drinking too much. You may end up going home with somebody. So therefore, the best option for a believer is to not go to a secular nightclub because it could lead too much to temptation. I get that. So I think what they're trying to process is, well, we don't want to say, then guys, let's create a small group where we all go to a nightclub together and we keep each other accountable. They're like, what if we create our own space that is a place where we can have fun, where other people can meet people and maybe people meet new friends, meet their future spouse or whatever. Because, you know, we've talked to single people on here all the time that goes like, where do I meet my person? And then our answer is always like, well, you meet them at church, you serve, which there's a level of truth to that. But outside of that, nowadays, everybody's like, well, I meet them on, on, on a, a dating app, you know? So I think the best way to happen is like, we're not in their proximity, but someone of wisdom because what's get easily going to happen is people of our seasons of life, married with kids, all that stuff like that. We're going to immediately look at that and we're going to be like, what a bunch of dorks or whatever, you know? Right. And I love these kids. I'm, I'm just using what our natural instinct would be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a bunch of dorks. They'd be, oh, my day. I could never. Like for me, I'm thinking like if I went to one of those things, I'd, you know, I'd still pick up girls, you know, like it, so I look at that or I look, I'm not 20 in 2023 right now right, who went right. through COVID, who didn't yeah. get their, who didn't get a prom you know, who didn't get a homecoming, who did, you know, like all these elemental things that are really big for someone that's a teenager. Like, like if you're a kid right now, that's 21, you went through COVID when you were junior, senior, like you got nothing that anyone traditionally does. And those aren't even sinful things, but you got no prom, you got no homecoming. You didn't get to take your driver's test till you were 19 and came out of this thing and all that stuff like that. You didn't get to get a first job because everything was in lockdown. And then when we came out of lockdown, 30 year olds were fighting for your job at Starbucks, you know. So you look at this and you go, man, you got you got a bunch of 21, 22, 23 year olds who are trying to create their own space while being honoring to God. So someone in their 30s, 40s and 50s needs to come along these kids and just be like, hey, let's let's open a discipleship tunnel as you do this. Like, let's just let's. 
Because what's going to happen is somebody's going to abuse this system. You're going to have guys, sure. Christian guys that are going to mm-hmm. come and start taking girls home or someone's going to bring, bring fl- a flask and it's going to like, it's going to happen. So let's dialogue. Like, how can we help you in the discipleship process? Mm. Do you know, like, that's the that's the new age, Adam's you know, Jesus a, revolution. Adam's about to call them yeah. and call these acquire kids. the organization. Let me be right. the, the, the chairman you. of the board of this place. <laughs> right. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is chain the doors. No, I'm just making <laughs> No, I, 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 I'm... But I sympathize. I, sure. I, get, I totally understand that perspective. And I know everyone else does on this table, but, you know. Just, it's just interesting. Again, for me, usually when I see something, I I like to like look under the hood before I make any like discerning ju- judgments. So I'm yeah. I don't. That's why when I saw that clip, I was like, I don't say anything necessarily wrong with that. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious what happens there. I'd be curious what their goal is. Is their goal to provide a communal experience in light of like dancing and fun? Is their goal to be like? evangelistic and bringing people and at the end they share the gospel yeah. right is it yeah. to try to help christian singles meet each other in a more healthy environment to start dating i, I don't i don't really know right. what they're doing so overall i don't see anything wrong with it initially but like you were saying there's certain some language like clubbing like like Turn turning up, up <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're gonna draw certain yeah. type of people who sure. might be struggling yeah. so you know it's and mind. that's okay because you know you want to be able to I'm there's send you, another one you know there's 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 this mix of not looking like the world but at the same time looking enough like the world so that the people in the world are not intimidated by things yeah. that are christian so if you have somebody who is going into this club you know maybe they're coerced by a friend to say like hey let's go clubbing <laughs> surprise right and uh but they go and they do enjoy it and they say you know what i really kind of like dancing and not feeling like there's going to be a man you know um saying hello behind me and because that's happened or right. look you know after my saying? cup my cup yeah or, you know, or like guys you know whatever, feeling yeah. like uh, you know I, I, I if i even talk to a girl she's just gonna laugh in my face Wh- whatever the situation is but they go and they enjoy it. And I think that our age people, we because we've been around the block and we know, okay, you can create the environment, but now what? Like yeah. now that you've caught them, what are you going to do to walk them through? Or, or when they walk out of here, are they going to walk out of here with a game plan? We're always about the game plan. Right. And, and so it, that's just sort of how we think are when we see something like that. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, let's okay. Play. Yeah. Cut so, off. No, he's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. It. Sorry. Talking too much. No, <laughs> Stop. Sinaz. Why am I that? That wasn't on purpose. Sinaz. I apologize. No, no. Happens all the time. It's okay. No, I'm going to let uh, Sinaz finish. But this, <laughs> no, is, this is them early on. This is them early on, them explaining what they're... This is the Nashville one. Okay. Them explaining Are you looking for a Christian community? I'm looking for a Christian community. A safe place to turn up and have fun. I'm looking for a safe place to turn up and have fun. You want to meet some Christians outside of church. I want to meet Christians outside of church. Come to the Cove, because you're a freaking lonely Christian. <laughs> Cove Nashville is sponsored by seven lonely black dudes, but you don't have to be black to show up, so you're more than welcome to come through if you're not a person of color. But anyway, please show up. Find some community, because you're a freaking loner. You're a loner. Did I fail to mention that you're a loner? Batteries not included. Wow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So, <laughs> welcome loners. <laughs> uh, discipleship, you know. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, 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 so my front row, front of the line experience with meeting people where they're at is Jesus Clubs. Okay, what we yeah. said was midweek and throughout the week, we're not engaging with youth how we ought to be as a church. Wednesday nights, we're kind of flunking and having hard engagement. And we're like, what can we do? We go into... We went into the lunches of their school day, yeah. and we just started seeing a crazy boom. With One Voice with Brian Barcelona. That she was where close? it all started, oh, yeah. and then he's a good friend. Yeah, so. he's dope. Yeah, he's yeah. killing. It. And that's the whole that's the whole uh, model. And so then we ended up seeing like over five hundred kids a week. Beautiful between schools. When obviously as a church we'd kill to have that on a midweek service, five hundred youth. That'd well, be wild. Well, then at one point it was fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred a week, a week before was before COVID. One high school alone. Yeah, 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 and that was before COVID. So now yeah. even post COVID, five hundred a week at least. And so it was like the front. It was the realization of, okay, if we can meet them where they're at, and they get the quintessential church experience, which is they get to go to church with their friends, they get to worship, they get to hear the word of God, and they have some food. That's what that's the whole sell with that because that that was her little bullet point, mm-hmm. and once we kind of do all that and we do it in their space, meeting them where they're mm-hmm. at, there's no reason 
And it was true that there's no reason why a youth wouldn't want to go to that. And so I don't think that's that for young adults. And that's, you don't think so? Well, so I don't get, think so. So, give me, so, so, so Einstein, give me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let's do this debate right here, right now. So provide me a solution. What What is that then yeah, for so, a young adult? So if, uh, <laughs> since, since you asked, <laughs> no, I mean, obviously. And you're still in your 20s. Because you a church like, our, that's what I'm saying. A church like, if this was happening at a club in Riverside, or that's a little far, but like down the street or Haven City, we found out they started doing a pop-up club. We'd be like, dude, why don't you just go to our church service? Because it's young enough. No, hold on. Give me a solution. Don't give me the critical for, for analysis. Them, for them? Give me a solution for what they're providing. Okay. Okay. So, so that's and again, you're assuming that every church does what our church does yes. or what Beloved does. So let's assume not every church is doing. Not every church is okay. reaching young people. Not every church has a small group culture. So whatever your answer is going to be in that, to just point someone back to their church, they may not have it. So give me the solution on where a young person finds community, okay. develops relationship, keeps clean keeps their head their their nose out of trouble and and meets new people. So I'm a I'm a I'm a young pastor in LA and I find out you're doing this in my city. No. No, I'm not he's saying, saying give me pretend a that there's no club. Pretend yeah. there's no club. Yeah. And you are tasked with creating an environment like that. But because not as people, a church leader, not as a church leader, just like a 21 year old who's like them, who's like, man, we, we don't yeah, have we got, anything. Got, our yeah, church doesn't provide anything. So we're going to create our own thing. What's that thing? It, honestly, I'm just such a, I listen, <laughs> I'm no, such no, a church guy. no, I'm such a church, honestly, but I'm such a believer that the church is the answer in a lot of ways. I don't even like the law. So you think they should start the a pitch. church? Do you want to meet Christians outside of church? There is no such thing as a Christian outside of the church. Hey, hey. <laughs> There is no such hey, thing yeah. as, as a cub. Uh, uh, yes, uh, there is. I mean, there is. Dude, but yeah, there yeah. is, but, but I get what you're trying but to say. Imagine, but yes, there is. I think the most, I think the, mo <laughs> the, the best Christian is so connected to their church, right? Like, we're not what? making ladders to this whole thing. I'm just saying, like, a quintessential Christian person okay, is so connected okay, to their hold church. On. You are a 20 year old who goes to a church of 50. Okay. And you have one pastor yeah. and no youth service. And But that's and, your church. And that's You're not your going church. Nowhere. You're, You're not, not going. going you were raised in this yeah. church from yes. when it was at the pastor's house. There's 50 people at this church. Yeah. You know everybody there. Yeah. There's nobody your age there. Everyone there is 60 and older. And then you. You're a 20 year old. Where do you go yeah. to meet and have fun with other Christian people in a Christian friendly environment? So uh, commission the church to do it or to create that experience for you. Honestly, I'm not even but trying to be... But I'm saying your pastor's saying, no, we're not interested in that. So there's... But that's the thing. Like uh, this... Uh, I don't know too much about it, but a few years ago when I was like just visiting all the churches in LA, I noticed that is the culture of a lot of churches. There are a bunch of visitors because that's what's happening in LA right now, right? A bunch of young adults are just visiting so many churches, getting what they want out of so many churches. I don't think that that's the way, but I think they're searching for something. And... Just to your point about like earlier, I, I Christian rap music, right, sounds so much like secular rap music, and mm -hmm. it's just not as good as the best rap music. So you take the best rap music on the chart, and then the best Christian, obviously the secular one is objectively better music as far as quality of music okay. type of deal. The church needs to be commissioned to be more excellent in every area, because that is how it all started all the main artists have been commissioned. You don't think like they all have the same, I mean, they all have the same access to equipment like Lecrae and all them. Like, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, but yeah. I mean, even when secular artists go Christian, their music isn't good. That's just a common, yeah, but that's just a common thing. That but my happens. point, my point is, my point, my is, point is, you're wrong. No, 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 no like, yeah, but no, but my I'm point is, like, like, I'm just a even, when, even when secular artists go Christian, it's not as good. Commission the church <laughs> to point you in that direction. If there's nothing, which I don't think is necessarily true, there's a enough hip young churches in LA. Our friend Julian. So you're friend, telling them to leave their church and go to Julian's? No, I'm telling them because <laughs> no, yo, yeah, because you're gonna say that. that no, I don't think. You, I don't what'd think you that's say at the end of that clip? What'd you say at the end of that clip? Discipleship. Because the main question is, do you want to meet Christians outside of church? Like, no. Well, Kinda, you're right. I, don't. I mean, I do. I, I would. No, you don't. If I was at a church that wasn't have, reaching that, but this is my church, like I'm called here, but they're not, 
that's not a strength of theirs. Every every church has different strengths, but more church, there's 330,000 churches in America. It's going to be a far more percentage who's not fulfilling, which is their whole premise on why they're starting their thing in the first place. Their whole premise is their generation is being ignored. Mm-hmm. That's the premise of their argument. And so in that case, like the answer could not be go find a church who does it because we don't want the, the like you should not just go leave your church because they're not reaching your age. That's a bad message to tell. Like there's so much other things you can learn. So that's where I'm saying, number one, they do need discipleship, but discipleship doesn't mean within their age to meet their needs. They still have a need and there is still a natural problem that exists in 2023, which is this next generation has no town hall. Yeah. So there's no such thing. And I'll ask you a question then. You Let and me- I met all our, all our friends, either in youth group or in college. Kids yeah. nowadays, during COVID, they didn't, majority of churches, they didn't have a youth group, and a lot of them don't go to college anymore. So let's flip They go it. to community college online. Let me flip online. it then and ask you this question. If I'm a young, I'm a young, I'm a Gen Z, I have a two-year-old son, let's say he's five years old, and I'm, in, I'm at some church, 50-member church, I say, hey, we still don't have a children's ministry, there's no steps towards that, but I want to come to church and I need, I need you guys to do something about the fact that we don't have a children's ministry because there's 10 other families in this church who have kids. Why are we not? No, we don't want to do that. We're not interested in that or that's not the vision or whatever that kickback is. I'm not, I'm not justified to go find a church that'll serve my family. No, I mean, like you, you talk you, to you, me, you, like you, say, you, you know, could you, that's what I'm saying. You could do that. Yeah. But that's not the response. Like, that's not the immediate answer. One of the first things I would say is number one. But again, I think young adult ministry is different. If it was kids, I mean, you're, you're talking about watching the kids. So I'd say, I'd say you guys ask the pastor if you could start a children's ministry, you right, know, right. And you might be able to start some type of young adult ministry or something like that. And that, that might be a move if your pastor releases yeah. you and lets you do that. But I don't think that still solves the problem at wide because you're, you're talking about telling, you know, 2 million young adult Christians, all of you guys go to your pastor tomorrow night and ask them if they could start it. If you can start a young adult church, right? Like let's, yeah, yeah, for sure. We know how bad that's going to go that yeah. fast. Yeah, <laughs> you know, sure. like, you know, the young adult pastor is going to be marrying two or three girls, you know, <laughs> through that. Cause you're going to immediately throw them on a platform and say, yeah, have a service start. Now you're in charge of discipleship. No, they need to be discipled. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, I'm putting the onus on older people. You're, we're, we're not yeah. fully not we, but the church at large and maybe even us like we're not fully discipling the next generation as much as we could be. That's for sure happening. But at the same time, like what is the solution for that young adult on what they're searching for? Like that's where I'm saying just saying go tell your pastor you want to start a young adult ministry. That's not going to lead to anything good right off the bat. That's going to. That's going to that's going to turn into its own little click club, you know, mm-hmm. of its own type of version without discipleship. So that's why I said that discipleship is important, but also where you don't have discipleship, they'll search for solution themselves and you get this. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So all I'm saying is to go to them and say, "Hey, you guys are looking like the world. We're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. As your pastor, you need to stop doing this tomorrow." It still doesn't provide them with a solution, yeah. you know, because yeah, no, we don't yeah, even do fair. young adult groups at our church because we don't believe in a weekly gathering right, of right. young adults because it does create some problems. For sure. I've seen it over the years, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, people get married and they leave. They think they're too good for it. You know, once they get married, yeah. other people come in and then it becomes kind of more of a power thing. Other people, they don't uh, they don't go into adulthood good in the main sanctuary because you created this environment that was just super youthful Mm -hmm. and super fun. And then they go into church and they go, this is boring. You know, when we were at young adult, they used to have hip hop and give away Jordans. Now this, they're, you know, telling me to tie this one, you know, like it doesn't transition well, which is why I, you know, years ago stopped doing young adult services in our church. So, but that, now we have a small group culture, which if more young adults engage in that, I, I believe you'll find it in our church and in our system, but talking about the system at large, you know, you're, you'd be asking, because if a pastor came to me, he's like, young adults are coming, I'm thinking about starting a young adult, young adult night for them. I'd be like, I don't recommend you do that. You know, I just think there's too many problems that come with that. You shouldn't mm-hmm. do that. Uh, but what you should do is, does your church have some type of discipleship culture and small group culture? Yeah. But now you're asking your pastor to do a lot at that point if they don't have anything like that. So could we you agree know? then that it would be better, this just... 
Uh, th- to gouge out, out your eye. Then, it'll be then, yeah. then, No, it'll be better to, to have a young adult <laughs> experience covered and and owned by the church, and by own not mean literally own. You know, put yeah. on a, a young adult ministry that is dysfunctional would still be better than a than a something that's going on in the city that's not covered by any church, but it's just a bunch of young Christians who want a place outside the church to connect, which. You can't have your cake and eat it. That's what I believe. You can't have your cake and eat it too when it comes to dealing with the body of Christ. Because what are they saying they don't like? So if I ask, why would you? That's what I would ask. Why would you want to meet a Christian outside of church? Well, because the church. And then I want to hear those answers because then that que- the answer to that question maybe will inform th- a better experience than what they want to do versus like, no, this is it. C- meeting Christians and hanging out with Christians outside well, do of church. Do they got an Instagram? You, know, you guys get what I'm saying? Send me their Instagram. I'll call them on Instagram right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the call in episode? <laughs> yeah. I'll call them oh. on Instagram right now. Oh. Hey, hey we are be on the letter. Yeah. We're here live, and we're discussing it. We want to know. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be like, hey, I have a podcast recording. We're talking about what you guys are doing right now. Tell us about it. I mean, like, is this fair? Could I Then I'll ask Will. Young adults come to your church, mm-hmm. and they, they say this, and they put you in this predicament <clears throat> and apply pressure to your church. Hey, we just feel there's... All the all the pitches, all the sales for this. Can we do something about this? What What do you say? I have a lot of thoughts on this. Yeah. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to see how I want to frame this. Uh huh. Well, our church again. We're a new church, <clears throat> predominantly millennial and Gen Z, like 300 of them. Um, Hobby Lobby has this motto, uh, or they used to have the motto: "You can do it. We can help." So that's kind mm-hmm. of our motto for a lot of the young people. So for me, Ephesians 4 is, Jesus gave gifts to the church, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, shepherd, you know, teacher, a fivefold. And, but then the goal of the leadership is to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. That word ministry just means to serve. It's not the mm-hmm. American church ministry because that organizational context that didn't exist. It's just you equip people to make disciples by serving people in the name of Christ. So for us, we have a lot of grassroots communities within our church. Like, hey, you like golf? Start a golf Mm -hmm. Discord chat with our church people. Hey, you like um, rock climbing? Start a rock climbing uh, Discord chat with our church. So we have like 50 literally Discord chats in our beloved church's Discord. And it's just, we just empower the people like, do what you love in the name of Jesus. It doesn't have to be... A Bible study where you pray it doesn't have to be a moment when you open scriptures. The church would do that. We'll do what the church usually does. Mm. But you do what only you can do, which is your passion, your what you love, and do it together. And then we have another Discord chat where we have a bunch of young entrepreneurs, where they and they don't have like uh, their own offices yet. So we have a chat where it's like, hey, five of us are going to this cafe, and we're just gonna work together. That's great. Feel, so it's, it's just. Mm-hmm. It's just happening like everywhere, and then we have dancers in our church. Like our church, I don't, Asians dog, they just popping right <laughs> now with dancing. Yeah, they be dancing. We bro. have like crazy. BTS. We are BTS. People, <laughs> like people at my church choreo for BTS yeah, yeah. for Blackpink. Heck yeah! And so we have so many dancers. So I'm like, yo, I want to ask y'all to help me make disciples by reaching these young people. Mm. Can y'all do dance work- workshops? Down, pass. Let's do it. 30, 40, 50, 100 young people come. Super they just dope. do. But they do it in the name of Christ, where it's yeah. not like overt, but everyone knows they're believers. Everyone knows they're followers. So for me, that's kind of my thoughts. And then let me say another thing about this regarding the fivefold. Um, in the church office, there's elder and deacon. But I think apostolic, prophetic, evangelist, teacher, shepherd, those are giftings, right? An apostolic leader yeah. is a pioneer. A prophetic leader is driven towards justice or hearing the voice of God. The evangelistic leader is more outreach and winning people over. But the church has historically only rewarded the shepherd and teachers, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So the pastor typically is a teacher and everyone's a student. Mm -hmm. So you just sit and listen, right? And they don't know what to do with congregation members who are apostolic, Mm. who are prophetic. And oftentimes because the church doesn't have avenues for them to exercise their gift, they leave the church space yeah. and they join yeah. other spaces, yeah. right? The, a lot of the creatives are prophetically gifted, mm-hmm. but because the church doesn't have a creative outlet like this, like Beyond mm-hmm. the Letter or the music that you guys do, those create avenues mm-hmm. for these prophetic types. I mm. always say the prophets of our culture are like the comedians, 
Yeah. The musicians, yeah. the painters, the truth sayers, right? And a lot of the entrepreneurs also leave the church. They're the they're apostolic. They're apostolic yeah. or they're, yeah. they're evangelists. Yeah. Evangelist. Yeah. Yeah. And I also feel like millennials, Gen Z are like a entrepreneurial generation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like a part it's of a our strong culture, yeah. right? I've been meeting these high school kids like freaking yeah, we're, we're yeah, making like six the, figures. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but yeah, then yeah. the church decided. I know a 16-year-old who has a Turo company in Florida, Crazy. and he has nine cars on his Turo. He, he has like Tesla Model 3s and all that, and he makes like 30 grand a yeah, month 30, just exactly. renting out in Orlando. So you for, know, for, 16. Me, for me being a church planner <laughs> in this hour, I don't want to tell the apostolic prophetic evangelist person, just listen to me preach. Mm, just yeah. come to my small group. Because for them, they're like, I'm, I'm itching you. I can't yeah. see And your for... next step is now you teach. Exactly. And they're like, I, I don't, I'm, good, I'm good on that. I don't exactly. know how to do that. Yeah. You know? So my thing is, what do you love? What are you yeah. passionate about? Why don't you do that, but bring others along mm. and do it in Christ's name and have these spontaneous moments yeah. when you talk about God, when you talk about your faith and disciple them. So that's to your question. I don't even know if that... I th no, no, I yeah. think you're. I think you're giving wisdom to someone who may be, like me or you or anyone else on this podcast that is in a position of power that can make a decision uh, yeah. to create a, a, a yeah. atmosphere of change. Because I got like they're my my dad's friends listen to this podcast mm -hmm. and they'll text me and be like, bro, I never because majority of us are sharing perspectives that are for millennials and younger yeah. and the conversation's broad for anyone to join in yeah. but because we're all majority of us except for sanaz are, are millennials <laughs> you know <laughs> Gen Gen X. X. But, like, so. but so you know it's good wisdom for you know people who may be a gen x a baby boomer who, who traditionally in, in right now yeah. in our culture have majority of the power majority of yeah. the decision making you know it's good thoughts even as a business owner to put this in perspective so like you if, know? if these this group was in my church, I would be all up on that. Because yeah, yeah, my yeah. thing is like, oh, yeah. I heard a quote, good leaders start fires, but great leaders fuel fires, mm -hmm. right? So if I had these young <laughs> dudes come up to me or these girls are like, hey, pastor, we want to reach my generation, but we want to do like this gathering where it's like a club. And I'll be like, I'll be asking mad questions. All yeah. right, like, like, help me understand this. And if <laughs> yeah. I felt like it was legit and like they love God, I'll be like, we're, we're behind you. How yeah. can I help you? What what can I do? Because for me, that's making disciples. That's equipping the saints to do ministry. What are, and, oh, go ahead. And it's not necessarily a part of my local church. Yeah. But I think... And your shepherd heart came in when you said, like, maybe a happy meeting is like, let's end the night with altar calls. Like, let's yeah. share the gospel. Exactly. You know, or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, let's add a little bit more meat to this. Yeah. Right. So that, that's know? what I mean. Because, like, I feel like for me, my temptation as a pastor is to make everything about the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But most people, that's not their job, right? Your job is to follow Christ. Yeah. And one of my mistakes when I was a youth pastor was I used to preach to make them like a pastor. Mm -hmm. But I had to change my mindset. I'm not calling people to serve the uh, vocationally the church. I need to equip them to be believers in their spaces, mm. right? So for me, how you were saying, like, it should be a part of church. I understand that. And me being a pastor, I'm all for that. But my mindset has been more like, if the church is a movement and the church is a part of a kingdom, I need to equip my people to be able to live out their faith where they are. Mm. And not just say the only way you could practice your faith is by becoming a small group leader. Yeah, 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 it's about ushering people. Yeah. Yeah. It's about... You're talking about... Yeah, you're talking about the book we're reading right now, Hero, Hero Maker, Maker, which mm -hmm. is oh, by yeah, yeah. Dave Ferguson. The Dave Ferguson, that, yeah. that's his phrase. Yeah. Uh, the You can do it, I can help. Oh, mm -hmm. that's his phrase. That, that's okay. his yeah. phrase. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the first so that's person I heard book. it from. We, we're reading that book as, yeah. a, as a team. Oh, so. dope. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's mandatory reading right now. Mandatory. You're like, you're obviously not getting it. We're clearly the only ones reading Hero Maker because we just said the book. Yep, Hero Maker, because as soon as he said it, I was like, Oh, it's like Hero Maker. I'm on chapter oh, yeah. four right oh, now. Okay. <laughs> I'm on chapter six. Let me try and call this guy. Let's see. Oh. Let's see. All right. Let me see. Did he respond? Uh, report to your DM? problem. No answer. Let me see. It cut out immediately. Let's see. All right. His Instagram didn't work. Let's DM try. him first. Like, Let's try. Yeah, I got to DM him. And say, and we're about to call you yeah, live let on him. a podcast. <laughs> what, what, How do I do this? What kind of quest? Watch, kind of watch, watch us find out they're like, out of line. Like, totally. Out of line. You know, right? well, because, <laughs> hey, because here's the deal. Like, we, don't the we, don't, we don't go to church. <laughs> what was that dude's name? Jolly, 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 the guy, the, the guy oh, we talked Jolly about. Jolly Rollers. Yeah, what is it? Jolly Rollers. Jolly Rollers. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, let's see. Let's well, see if I'm, it lets me. 
I mean, oh I'm, goodness, it's it's report problem. Well, because I'm saying though, though the criteria and the set of questions you ask, mm-hmm. they'll be pretty critical questions, mm-hmm. right? And you're not gonna, like you, sure. like you said, you're gonna have this dialogue because you're not gonna do it willy nilly. You're not gonna do it as just an optimistic approach. You're gonna vet it out. Mm. But it's kind of like a test that probably can't be passed, you know, because if it is nothing like a church experience, nothing devotional based, no, you know, what would be some things you ask? What That'd be the real question. How would you weed through this? I mean, I would just first ask them, what's the goal? What's your vision? What are you trying to accomplish? What's your wins? What's your Why? And I would honestly just be shepherding through them. And then my, my bigger question is, who's the leader? Because everything rises and falls on that person. So for me, it's like, is this person's faith strong? Mm-hmm. Like, are they walking with the Lord? Um, or is this someone that's opportunistic? Yeah. They're just using Jesus to get more sales. Sure. And they're using Jesus to promote themselves. For sure. And so, like, that's what I'm primarily trying to figure out. Yeah, and they're like, and, oh, it turns out there's a $20 entrance fee. <laughs> and then you, yeah. And, whole thing. Which is fine. Yeah. Um, as long as there is some sort of structure and For sure. order yeah, some stewardship in all of this. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you just have to look at all of those things. And I think that because we, I mean, the people of the state, like, we... Uh, we understand the order that comes in anything that has to do with ministry. Yeah. So we're looking at all of those things. You're talking about, you know, what what is the purpose? Uh, what is the end goal? You know, look, I, I, I love looking at SMART goals. SMART goals to me are yeah. one of those things where it's just like, if you... Oh, okay. All right. Just call you the guy. That's his phone number? It has to yeah. be. I DM him. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the paradigm the that... Because like you're right, that bone in me oh. is so Mm pro-church so and in a way i mean we are the church professionals right we sure mm -hmm. yeah you know we don't just do sunday service we sit there and strategize monday and so we have this evangelistic department we can actually mobilize you in and so yeah you know not putting evangelists in a box or apostolics in a box the the in, in regards to the gifting but also the church does create space for them to run provides resources for them to go mm. and so that's kind of right. where Let me try that's this. why i just sound so pro-church because it's like wh- what is this doing that the church isn't and if sure. there's answers there then i'll even be for it sure <laughs> but be sure to ask so adam's a wild man <laughs> this is so funny yeah, let's just call the guy I highly doubt they're gonna pick up because it's not I'm like, I'm like send this? a deal memo yeah unless you call them like five times then they maybe pick up Unless an emergency, something. Just, just have Nancy draft a text. Hey, this is Pastor Adam. Da, da, da. Live on the podcast. Your call has been forwarded. You want to ask? You just need to DM uh-huh. him and say. Yeah, I DM'd from, him. From I did already. I did. I, well, uh, I, maybe I, he's online. in class. I did. I have hey. a question. Are they like popping off right now? Like, well, are, they, no are they like? I mean, the stuff, all the between the Nashville joint and now seeing their thing, I, it's just, it's giving the appearance that is because obviously it's a controversial sure. uh, endeavor. So. Sure. Uh, Theirs launches December thirty first. Yeah, the L A one. Yeah, the you're gonna go. You're gonna go, go undercover. undercover and give us a report. And will, it, and it looks back. like so. It looks like the guy putting it on is a married couple. It looks like he's a hip hop artist too. So it looks like there's gonna be some performances surrounded around these nights that they do too. Which I mean, okay, that's the standard. That's a little more like a concert yeah. and a yeah. standard. You know, uh, in a good way. L A. You know, so. I mean, uh, I mean, it's I'm just open. like when Kanye. I'm, I'm trying to understand. It's the, I know a lot of us get caught up in the the language Christian club and the turn. <laughs> yes. Both the Nashville TikTok and which are totally separate, and this one both said turn up in yeah. their video. They both so said turn up. So clearly, no, 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 no. To completely different groups. Interesting. So clearly, we don't understand the language because yeah. if two different people are using the same language, then that's. Cl- Clearly to me, like a Gen old. Z. But you got language. it though. You got you know, it. Like, you know why they're using the word, and we no. know what they really mean. No, they're trying to I appeal they because no, they're, I, I think they're just trying to appeal. And I mean, I in a way, that's just, yeah, just an exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's an appeal. I think it's lingo. Lingo that has no malicious intent. Yeah. It's just well, oh, I don't even think they're trying to innuendo like the turn up of the culture because that's what I think a lot of people are getting caught up. Is like we think they're trying to pursue the the gray area of. The world and this Christianity, and like that, yeah. I don't think that's the language. I don't. I don't think that's why 
and I could be wrong. Like, no, I you're could right. Be so you're, wrong. You're, you're right. <laughs> I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that I right. like. I don't think they're trying to, you know, that fringe person so, who comes so, to so church right. on Sunday. Like right. that was my wife in college. She'd get plastered right. high on weekends in college. Turn up. And but like her parents instilled in her. You never miss church on Sunday. Mm. Never. So she would yeah. show up to church hungover. Oh, for sure. You know, and so like you could go, oh, maybe they're trying to appeal to the, the Ashleys, like mm. the one who's kind of on the fence and we're trying to create atmosphere that looks like what you're doing Saturday night, but saying, hey, you don't have to get a hangover. You don't have to get or they're not even like they're like that audience is for the for the birds. Like we really just want to create a Christian Avenue where yeah. we can have fun. We can listen and, to artists. And that's and, what it seems like. You know, she's and doing if a, that's the case, yeah. then it's like... So I have to then you, think, you know, would I have gone to one of these clubs in my 20s when I was new to church but still in the club on Saturday nights? No, you would wouldn't I have. Said, I don't think it's for you. I don't know. Maybe I would have. Maybe I would have been like, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm going to church on Sundays. I'm learning about this Jesus. I'm going to the clubs... Why don't I just try this way and yeah. see if that would suffice? Yeah. And uh, now would it would it have, you know, scratched my itch? I don't know, yeah. but I, I would have tried it for sure. I would have tried it because in it, yeah, in in a pursuit of just trying to uh, to explore my Christianity yeah. at the time, I I would have probably tried it. I don't know how far I would have and gotten she's doing a lot of work. I maybe would have enjoyed it. She's doing a lot of work in the comments yeah. to clarify. It's not that catching people on the fringes. It's not even faking it like it's a worldly. She's like, it is a just a purely unapologetic Christian experience. Yeah. I, so I, that's cool. You know, so I I sound like I'm totally burning the thing down. In no, my I head. think you are. I think you're playing a good position on the I'm podcast just, you know, right now to yeah, to, provoke, to, to yeah. provoke Someone has to. Someone has to. You know? But <laughs> also, yeah, I'm just like, because she's doing a lot of work to be like, it's just so Christian. Trust me, there's no mistake. I'm not catching people on the fringes. It is the young, true Christian who just wants to have a club vibe, you know? So then that is Nancy. Nancy's to, no, in a good way. Like Nancy is like for the like, oh, I'm going to go dance salsa on a Thursday night because I just like to do it. So I'm, I'm sure if there was like. Nancy be doing that. Yeah, for sure. If there was a thing that was purely good, like you're saying, and if you went through the the questions and, and the criteria of just what is a good and a good conducive environment that will actually be fruitful for a young person to go to. Yeah. That's a no brainer, you know, yeah. but, but that it's, it's like a test that can't be passed almost because <laughs> we, because we do, we, you know, we've done young adult experiences, young adult ministry. And I'm just like, we're, I think we're locked in right now. <laughs> like that. Well, I mean, yeah, church I, caters I, I to lean, and, I, yeah, I lean into being a little more square in the church. I, even though we come off very hip and like very cool in a lot of our approach. And that's what usually keeps, catches people most off guard. Even my pastor friends, as we get closer, cause I'm the guy with the tattoos and I have the marketing background and I do all these, like in appearance sake, it looks like I make a lot of effort to, to be uh, culturally relevant, but then you, get to know me more and you actually find that I'm very biblically conservative. Yeah. I'm very high on sin value and, and discipleship that throws even like friends off. Like, Oh man, I didn't know, mm. you know, <laughs> you're, you're like, boring. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll you know? gonna say the same thing. Like, <laughs> like for me, having not grown up in church, I want the church to preach the gospel because I got <laughs> saved, not by the lights mm -hmm, and by the mm -hmm. smoke and by these cool yeah, that's it, things. Right there, like, yeah. It was the holiness of God. It was rich theological songs that would <laughs> week after week, I'm like, oh my God, my heart is like being convicted. It was the proclamation of his words. So I'm with you on that too. It's like, yeah. I don't really care for trying to make church. I, I always tell even our, like our worship team, I always tell them, and I don't know, maybe, maybe people disagree. <laughs> I go, hey, I want you to sound so good, but not so good. Or not too good that people get distracted. Yeah. But I don't want you to be. Uh, yeah, I don't want you to go. It's not a concert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. I, always Absolutely. Tell, I always tell my team, like, hey, even when you go up on stage to dress, like, dress nice, but don't dress to the point where you have too much attention on yourself. So even for me, a lot of times when I wear clothes, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I like to dress nice. I like nice clothes, but those Jordans might just bring too much attention to me. That jewelry might make me look too much this way. So for yeah. me, it's like I want the church to be excellent, like you were saying, but not so much so that the attention comes to you. 
right? But in the world, you want to be excellent so that you could stand out. Yeah. But I feel like in the church is like, be just good enough where you become a you you disappear mm. and the glory goes to Christ. Yeah. Right. So like even yeah. the best worship leaders to me are like, they're really good, but they know when to just. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And then God's glory just fills the room. Yeah. So, so when I see churches who are like so wrapped up in trying to like do these appear thi- appear right yeah but then for me just like yeah. you bro was like yo like yeah the same thing worked for two thousand years why are yeah. you tripping like yeah. go back to that yeah you yeah know what I mean? yeah and the way i process it like in um broadening what you're saying too is like way i process it is like i just always want to go and i want to be the best version that god created me to be mm-hmm. and i want to do it the best mm-hmm. in excellence yeah so that could have at times appear like show, Mm -hmm. but it's not, it's, you know, if you study the first and second temple, specifically the second temple that Solomon was charged to build, this thing was immaculate. Mm -hmm. Every square meter was measured to perfection. Every ounce of material that were used, wood was from Lebanon, Mm -hmm. gold was from Persia, Mm -hmm. rubies and diamonds, and all to share about the excellence and Mm -hmm. the beauty and the preservation of God. What it was never meant to do was to show how man is valuable yeah. and how man needs to be worshipped. It was to utilize these elements to give God glory Absolutely. to His full beauty. And so, for me, like if 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 uh, if I'm designing a piece of merch or we're making music, like you know, we never sit there and say, "What do you think will get the best reaction? What do you think will get the best sales?" I think to myself. What is what clearly displays my heart and love for God? Absolutely. When I'm designing this merch, this is as an artist, this is my heart for God. And if people like it and buy mm-hmm. it, God bless. Absolutely. And if they don't buy it again, then I don't have the money to do merch again. <laughs> That's the last <laughs> yeah, time yes. I do that for endeavor, sure. right? Yeah, and it's sure. like, and this music that we did, and then we go in a room and we seek God, and then we play and we get inspired and yeah. all these things. We go, hey, we're doing this as an act of worship to God. If it sells, if we win a Grammy, if we do blah, blah, blah. we're not sitting there and we don't run marketing demos on what's the best music being sold yeah. right now. What are people looking to hear? Mm-hmm. How can I scratch and rub people? people's itches to get the best sales like it's not doing that it's just we pursue this we do it in excellence and so i think a church service would be that it's just we pursue excellence why uh not to get man's applause but because because god deserves it and therefore then that's why we don't put on a show you're not there to put on a show you're not there to show off your talent you're there to give god your best right and so that could someone make because because in the black church you're meant to express a little more emotion because it exhibits you know you when you countenance conviction yeah when you came from slavery and you're free and it all it goes all the way to emancipation proclamation and the watch night and how at midnight Mm -hmm. you know they were free and there was it was jubilation so a lot of african-american worship is a, is a little more emotional For because sure, it right. has historic roots, right? Sure. So I even explain that to some people. Sometimes people, when we talk about our podcast with our worship, Daniel's black. He came from a black church. People sometimes look at Daniel and say, oh, he's a, he's showing off or he's too emotional. He does a lot. He and, does a lot. Yeah, he That's does a lot because yeah. he jumps and he shouts and he jumps off stage. And, and you know, you could easily think, oh, he's causing a distraction. Sure. But if you're from his culture, he's setting up the environment in which we're all supposed to respond culturally in that yeah, way. Yeah. And if you ever ask Daniel, like, oh, do, you know, are you doing that for blah, 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 blah? He's like, no, this is what the Lord's done for me. This, this is how yeah. I express it. And then for he sure. knows at times when to dial that back. For mm-hmm. sure. And so I think that's what has to be in check is like, yeah. why do we do this? So if someone started a nightclub and, and they're saying, hey, we're going to do it because this is a big industry and we're going to make a killing of money or, mm-hmm. or you know, let's sell it and it's going to pop off and then we're going to promote our music for it or something like that, then okay, then maybe you're, maybe, maybe you might need to check your heart. For sure. But if it's like, um, w- God has given us the ability to gather people. Some people have a great gift at gathering. They do really good at creating small groups and uh, yeah. they can start churches and mm-hmm. all that stuff. It's like, okay, well, why don't we gather something in a room and listen to music? If, if there's an authenticity of heart, that's why to me it was important to like, if we, talk to them it would have been cool just to get that feeling of like where's the heart at like where, sure. where's your heart with this 
Is it coming from a critical spirit of like, well, the church doesn't blank, the church doesn't yeah. blank, the church doesn't Which blank. Which I hate. No, okay, then then that's highly critical. For and, sure, for sure. You know, at some point you're going to get served cold soup too and people are going to come to yours and your thing and go, well, yeah. you guys don't blank and you guys don't blank. Yeah, you know? never ending. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You get, you get what you sow. But, but yeah, I think it's interesting, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. You have final thoughts and we, thoughts? Well, you know, I, I, as we're talking about it, I'm just thinking about... Because as we talked about before, I wasn't a Christian at that time. I was in the club. So I can't come from a perspective of young people who feel like their needs are not being met in the church. And so they want to go and they want to create something. But with that, it also confuses me because I don't know why if you are such a on fire um, person for Christ at such a young age, would you want to create an environment that mirrors um, the world and what people are getting caught up in? I, I don't know why the, that would be the desire. Yeah. And, and that might also be why I'm confused about it because I did live it. And so there is yeah. absolutely no desire yeah. in my heart. You didn't see much good from it. Right. You know, right. I, when you look no, back, you know, you know yeah. it's just like, I mean, it's it's funny that we watch this video because though I, I very vividly remember having a conversation with one of my girlfriends. I had just moved to North Hollywood, um, and I had just gotten a job as a school counselor right out of grad school. And I had said to her, hey, you know what? This was the first time I ever had expressed that I ever wanted to go to church. I said to her, hey, I want to go. I, you know what? I'm... I'm 25 years old. I'm I'm over the club scene. These are the exact words I use. Yeah. I'm over the club scene. I'm not meeting people at work. I think I want to go to a church just because I want to meet people to go to like a game night on a Sunday night. Mm. That's what I wanted. I wanted mm. to meet wholesome people where I didn't feel like I had to wear something too tight, drink too much, and, you know... And then not remember what I did the night before. I was over it. And so then that was the time that I said, I think I want to find a church. So I have a hard time when people who are are Christian are saying, well, we want to find a club. You know, because it's the absolute opposite of how I even came to Christ in the first Mm -hmm. place. So I have the absolute opposite trajectory mm -hmm. of my relationship with Christ. So... It's hard for me to understand. Um, I yeah. get it from a sense of I, I was in the club, so I can't sit there and say that I didn't go. I mean, I went time after uh, week after but week you after lived week. That life. I lived you that lived life. that life. But for me to say I'm so tired of the club that I just want to go to a church, mm-hmm. that um, <laughs> I struggle with this. Maybe idea. that is their 4D chess move. Is, <laughs> well, is get you tired of the club? Go, go, we're gonna go so I, the club. I feel like though, yeah. the, the difference though is Gen Z don't go to church. Mm-hmm. And they don't think I want to go to church. Mm-hmm. I think for the most part, Gen Z thinks church. They, their mind immediately goes to corrupt. Well, that, that was hers too. She was Muslim. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. That she had never want, been to a church. That's interesting though that your mind yeah. went to I want to go visit a church. I want to go visit a church. Yes. And I had, I mean, I had had a couple of very, very bad experiences in a church. Um, a very bad experiences. So the fact that that day, and I'll tell you why, because I had a coworker. We're talking about how we talked earlier about how. You know, your your job is mm-hmm. to just be the church in mm-hmm. in whatever environment that it is that you're in and not always have to, you know, if everybody starts a church, then it's going to be a church of one mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. But I had a coworker who every single Friday, every Friday, she said, Sanaz, do you want to come to church with me on Sunday? And I said, Latricia, her name was Latricia, I said, Latricia, no, thank you, you know, <laughs> yeah. and she said, okay, just so you know, I'm going to ask you next Friday. And I'm like, and I love you for it. And we, years and every single Friday. And there was something I, you know, and now I could just recognize it as just the, as the Holy spirit yeah. would just, wow. yeah. just like reminded me because she was constantly instilling, like, come with me, come with me, come with me. So when I wanted community in that moment, I remembered her and I remembered where she wanted me to go. And then I remembered how much mm-hmm. I loved her and what a great person she was um, sharing a cubicle with me. And so all these little pieces, that's how I ended up finding Christ. And 
So yeah, I understand the need for community. I understand the need for something outside of the church because I even wanted to go to church just so I could have friends to hang with on like a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. I just wanted something a little bit more refreshing than what I had. And so I just, I struggle as like a mom who, you know, is just saying like, well, but the club's not the answer. It it just isn't because... Nothing really great and, comes from that, in that my is, opinion. And that's the hard place we're at because my wife told me about a book she's reading. I uh, forgot the name of it, but it's pretty much a man who's mentoring. And this is taking place in like the 40s so like a, um, or like the 50s. So this man is of the greatest generation and he's mentoring a baby boomer. Mm. And it's these conversations where he's telling him a baby boomer, you guys don't connect with anyone anymore. You guys don't. And it sounds like criticism we make to Gen Z. Mm-hmm. So it's just a copy and paste. And then I, I instantly this week, I have, a, I have like a 12-year-old brother. And I'm like, hey, you going to come hang out with me for the holidays? And this was like a month ago. He's like, heck yeah, I'll be there. I'll spend a week with you guys or whatever. I follow up. Hey, you, and I'm checking in on him. Hey, you still coming with us for the holidays? And then he goes, I don't know. Um, I might go with my best friend and to visit his dad in Long Beach. And I sarcastically go, wow, it must be a hard decision. Hang out with your brother and his family or your best friend, giving him a hard time because it's a no brainer. Mm. He lives remote, far away. It's, we very, we have few times to connect. Then I thought for a second, wait, hold on. I go back to my 13 year old self. Mm-hmm. I didn't give a rip about my family. I just wanted to be with my friends. Mm-hmm. That's it. So then I text him and change the energy like, hey, you know what? Just kidding. I would do the same thing if I was you. Like, let me know how that goes. Let me know if you, you can a good call time. right now. I just got to move. And so oh, we, oh, I just got to go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, he's a relentless, fearless leader right here, dog. <laughs> who, who we, we call? Who is easy to found? L.A. or Nashville? L.A. LA. Uh, let's go, baby. Well, <coughs> I bet you he looked at the. He did. He saw the three million views. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello. On speaker oh right my now. bad, bro. Let me okay. put you on speaker. Oh, second. Can you hear me? Hello. Hey, man. Can you hear me? Hold on. It might be a. Is there a speaker phone out here? Uh, let's see. Did you? Did, is that your phone number in your profile? Okay. I see. Hello. Is that your phone number in your profile? You want me to call your cell instead? I just. I just put you on speaker. Oh, okay. You can hear me now. Yeah. What's up, man? My name's uh, Pastor Adam. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for seeing your Instagram, man. Of course. So here's the deal. I, we got, uh, we're out here in the Inland Empire. So we're in Rancho Cucamonga. I got a podcast called Beyond the Letter. And so it's like uh, kind of the Christian Joe Rogan experience type of thing. That's the best way to summarize it. But we, at, right when we came in, someone on our team was talking about one of us brought up this Nashville Christian club that started. And then someone on our team was like, no, there's some individuals uh, who started one in LA or are starting one. And obviously, you know, we're all Christian leaders. There's four of us at the table. We all just start spitballing our raw emotion. We pulled up some of your guys' uh, uh, videos, some of the stuff in Nashville too. It's really had raw emotion. And so at first we were like, oh, I don't know about this. Then we thought, well, let's try to understand for young people what they, what do they need or whatever. And so for about an hour, we've been speculating like, okay, what would you do if you're in the shoes? What if you were in your early 20s and all that kind of stuff like that? Like, you know, how would you feel? And so really I was just like, man, maybe we try to get a hold of one of them and just let them share their heart and see if we ask a couple questions. Are you good with of that, course. bro? Yeah, sounds amazing. All right. So obviously I've seen online you've gotten, you know, you gotten good reaction and you know speculative reaction to bad mostly reaction. Bad reaction mostly bad. <laughs> how, well, number one, man, how does that make you feel that it's that it's mostly bad reaction? Hold on, you're you're cutting in and out. I'm a I'm gonna send you my number. Okay, I'll call it. Yeah, just call my number, yeah. All right, yeah, put it put it in the chat and I'll call you. All right, bye. Instagram, do better with your call feature. I know. Yeah, horrible, Instagram. Dude. We just tried in, in the podcast. Real and fun. then it asks you, how was this call? Bad. <laughs> It does. It literally yeah, gave a little yeah, start. Yeah. I X'd it out. I it's didn't. never gone it's good. His number right yeah. now. All right, let's see. So, oh, this is exciting. Hopefully, he caught what I said. I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to cut it uh, out. Is he calling you? No. Oh, that's it's, another. It's my insurance a, agent. A bugaboo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like about your insurance claim. But you know what? It's interesting though, because like that's really an important aspect of it all. Because 
what you were talking about, like we don't ask the there young people what it is that they really want and what yeah. it is that they need. Yeah. And we're always we, talking to them like we know better. I've ditched, just make an assumption. I've ditched birthday right. parties, okay. family. Sure. And port- Jermaine, stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Is this better? Yeah, much. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, man, Instagram call is horrible, bro. Horrible. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, did you catch my question at all, or you need me to repeat it? Uh, yeah, I need you to repeat it. I heard the beginning of it, then you started cutting it out. Got it. Okay. So you said mostly bad reaction. So my first question was just like, how has that made you feel that your reaction has been mostly bad? Like, did you think going into it that you're you would like when you put it out there, you were like, man, we're gonna get a lot of traction on this, and were you surprised that there was a lot more criticism than you thought? Um, the thing. The, the thought pattern was, you know, okay, what what type of event are we doing? And so, you know, like how I was thinking about it before we even came up with the name, because it was, God told us to create a space. We took it on our own merits and to name the space where we named it. But God's yeah. been giving us visions and dreams about this space um, that is a place that's like a, a safe place for Christians to come and hang out. And so that was that. That's what. But the actual name is. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but yeah, like you said, in, in um, the Ark, and there's one in Atlanta, and then there's one in. Um, what was it Nashville? Yeah, the Cove or something like that. Yeah, the Cove. Yeah, and there's also one in Florida. And so you know, the vision that we had that God was giving us was similar to theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, I we definitely didn't know the extent of you know like when we were because we talked to those clubs. Um, because we're trying to get, we were trying to, you know, like we believe God is a God of order. And so, you know, we want to make sure that before we dive into something that we have somebody who has any type of experience to help guide us through. Um, and so we called actually, I don't know if you know who Bryce G is, but uh, mm-hmm. he's like a really popular DJ. Oh, okay. Uh, and, you know, he, and he explained that there was some backlash, but I did not expect nearly, nearly as much backlash as it got. Yeah. Um, you know, because in my head, how I see it, um, is is very simple, and it was only after the reaction that we got that I even I was like, okay, well, you know, did I do wrong by call- calling the club? Because obviously, it mm. you know it, it triggered a lot of people, um, and so that's where I had to go back to my prayer time. And in all honesty, I saw the reaction. I was like, oh shoot, like did I mess up? So I went back. Um, into my prayer time and I started praying really hard about it because um I like you, you I could easily change the name to Christian Lounge. Mm-hmm. I could change mm-hmm. it I could change it very, very easily. It's not gonna it's not gonna cost anything to change it. Yeah. Um so I so I went into prayer um and I was really seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance and he gave me a specific word. I mean if you want to hear I could share it. Yeah, yeah. Please share. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I got to pull it up. I, I wrote it in my prayer journal and then I um, put it on my doc so I don't, so I, I, I remember the vision and I remember what God was telling me. All right, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So this is, this is what I was feeling the Holy Spirit was saying. He was saying, I have called you to call it a club. This will invite my people who have fallen away and let them join a community that would invite them back to me. Do not change the name. This is my tactic. Keep it holy. Wash over it with all your might and I will move in that place. My spirit will be there. My peace will be in that event. Dedicate and worship before the event. Deliverance and healings will happen here. Souls will be saved. People will not like this, but this is what I'm calling you to do. Mm. Be prepared for persecution. Mm. Yeah. So this, this is what I was hearing. I mean, I, I believe that Holy Spirit gives in specific instructions. I believe you can hear from the Holy Spirit. Um, and so when we, I was honestly, I was ready to change it. And, and I, and that's what, after worshiping and praying, I was, this is what I felt God was saying on my heart. Um, the first video is almost at a million views now. Yeah. Um, I, I shoot, like I, I, you know, like I never thought it, I, and, and it is driven by, you know, obviously people thinking that, um, we're demonic and we're of the world. And, yeah. Uh, but you know, in general, like here's the thing is I truly do believe God is it, God is doing God, but it's in a slightly different context. And so this is not meant to take away from church. Church will always be church. That's the place to be filled up, to be restored. And some people, some people are like, this is, this is a church. You already have churches. Well, 
Not necessarily. This, I mean, well, 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 we already have churches, but you know what this place is 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 a place for like-minded believers to come and hang. Um, overall, we want to create a community in Los Angeles because we feel like I mean, like I only know three or four Christians out in Los Angeles. We're so spread apart um, because a lot of Christians don't even live here. There's a lot in the Bible Belt, you know. Yeah. But the are you from Los here, Angeles? Yeah, I'm from Inglewood. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. And so, you know, the vision that God was putting on my heart before even this all started, like a, a couple like a couple of years ago, was it was like, I kept seeing dreams of this like building with a bunch of different people in it. And I was confused. And I was like, I don't know what this is. And it was just a couple of weeks ago where like God just clicked it all in for me. And um, the space actually, you know, I, I like I'm, I'm gonna answer a bunch of different questions that you might have just in this this talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the space one is obviously meant for fellowship. Um, it's meant for worship too. We're gonna be worshiping. We're gonna have fellowship. Um, we're gonna have you know Christian rap, Christian R and B. Um, you know, like that's the downstairs. So upstairs, we actually have a prayer room. And so what a prayer room is is basically you need prayer or if you're seeking for something we have like pastors in the prayer room you know who are looking to pray with people so maybe something downstairs you know like maybe you gave your life to jesus downstairs you know after somebody because when you be doing testimonies and all these different things you know and you want you know you want to you know want next steps or you want prayer because you're going through depression or anxiety you know there's a prayer room upstairs with like pastors who are ready to pray for you and, and speak life over you um and then we have a fellowship room, and that's just a room where we have games and stuff where you can come. If you're tired of dancing, here there's a bunch of games, you know, like um, fellowship up there. Um, but the overall event and what we feel like God was saying is that, you know, this is a this is a, the same God, different context of mm-hmm. how of how He's going to be moving. So, you know, He was saying that I and I truly do believe like healings and deliverances will happen in here. People will give their lives to Jesus. It's a context in which it's obviously not a church, but it's a context in where believers come together and in coming together and worshiping God, things are going to happen. You know, like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Is it, did this come from like, uh, like, you know, do you have a local church or, or a local pastor you go to? Yeah. So I go to Faithful Central. It's in Inglewood. Um, is it, it is that Bishop Omer or Bishop Blake? Yeah, Omer. Oh, Omer oh. just retired. Oh, and uh, who, who's 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 now pastoring his son? Uh, it was the young adult pastor. His name is Pastor JP John Paul. Yes, right John Paul. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Great church. Solid church. Amazing church. Yeah. And are um, you? I saw your thing. Is it preacher or pastor on your Instagram bio? Are are you in full time ministry? I I do full time ministry. I am not a pastor. Oh, okay. um, I am, I do work with the youth. Um, and actually JB, the preacher is actually, that's my artist name. Cause I'm an artist. Got it. And oh, okay. So, and, and so I preach through my rapping, but I also do make videos talking. Oh, um, okay. Am, yeah. 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 I, like the, the youth, uh, the youth pastors are setting us up, my wife and I to be the next youth pastors. They're training us, well. um, and stuff, but we work full time for ministry. Yeah. And so you guys are obviously taking a big leap of faith because you started leasing a you leasing a you leased a space, and you're like renovating it and stuff. So basically, our goal is to do it once a month. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah, so we we rent out the venue. Got um, it, got it. Okay. You know, like again, we're 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 only twenty two, so the funds ain't funding. <laughs> should be funding. We get. I mean, that's what we've been talking about here, trying to put perspective ourselves we're all in our 30s and 40s and different seasons of life but that's been the topic of conversation if you're 20 21 22 you may go to a solid church a great place to fellowship um but you know maybe where you go the young adult community may be limited or that may not be a huge focal point you know so who's who's really stepping into that gap and i i understand that you know um i you know i commend you for for what you're doing and what you're stepping out in faith um you know, few 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 of us here are senior pastors at the table, and we were talking, and and uh, as we're trying to think of how you guys are probably trying to process solving a problem that exists with your guys' generation, like 
you know, I know for me, like you're sharing a lot of perspective and uh, heart where it seems like whether I would do it that way or do it some way or not, but you've taken this a a deep thought of prayer. You are writing down what you believe God is revealing to you. You have a faithfulness to the Bible. You have a strong belief system in the local church. I mean, anything that I would probably openly bring on critic criticism, which we were processing at first, not criticizing, but processing, Hey, what do you think they view this, how they view this? Like to me, you have answered a lot Mm -hmm. of those things that I'd be like, Oh wow, this seems to have a lot of great intention and thought and you hope to bring people to the Lord and process them through not only to healing, but to the local church. I mean, I think, I think that's a beautiful thing, bro. I encourage you to keep, keep at it, you and your wife, and that the Lord will provide everything that you guys need. And, um, you know, we have a bit of a listenership on this podcast, so I know our team will put your guys' Instagram in the, in the show notes so that, you know, people will come and join it. December 31st is your launch? You, Wait, a couple of our a couple of our staff said they're going to be there on the opening. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> All right. December yeah, what? Thirty first, New Year's Eve, right? New Year's Eve. Yeah. New, New Year's Eve. Eve. Oh, that's yeah. perfect. All right. So yes, your perfect. first one is smart. New Year's Eve. Smart. So if Very anyone's smart. not going to our service, but our, your oh, guys' yeah, we have a service goes way later. Oh, we have a service. But we're like, you know, we're, we're all seven, old. So yeah, ours is going to be o'clock. out by like seven thirty. Eight thirty. What time? We're starting at. Like nine. Oh, yeah, yeah, caravan over. Plenty of time to come to Abundant and then shoot over there (laughs) for any of you youngies who want to go and hang out, man. Bro, I, I do you guys have any thoughts or no, questions? No, I just I, I want to say oh hang on, grab you it. Can right. hold it in okay. a I just want to say like you know I'm grateful. Hold it closer. I'm grateful for the um, just hearing the heart because it's so easy to watch a clip on social media and just co- sort of fill in the blanks where we think are missing what some of the things that we were talking about I'm sure you'll listen to it when we when we air it is we were just trying to feel like well what's the game plan what's the heart what is it that the motive what's the motive what's the after like if people are coming and they're unsaved what happens if they have an experience are is there a church they're going to yeah. get connected to is there are there people who are going to be able to you know um, disciple them things like that so being able to hear what you have said it's sort of the heart of it and the fact that it's more than sort of this Christian club where it's like a club just with Christian music, which is sort of like what we were thinking in the first place. It's nice to hear that there's a lot of other parts to it than that so that we're not just, you know, it's not just, um, you know, putting a pretty bow on what's normally a sinful thing that people are doing. Um, And, you know, and so we appreciate hearing the heart of it. We appreciate hearing that there's a lot of thought that went into it, a lot of guidance that went into it. You guys have clearly been, um, you know, uh, leaning into what you believe God is telling you about this. So we pray nothing but success and and souls to be saved. And, you know, this could very well be a great thing for you guys, and we're excited to see. We'll, yeah. we'll all follow you and see how it goes. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. I, I pray. I hope. Well, thank you for your beautiful words. I also do want to say, uh, even in terms of, um, in terms of the space, um, you know, we're recruiting volunteers, and basically what they are, are monitors. So they're in. They're inside the space, but their goal, like they're going to be trained on what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. Mm-hmm. And if stuff starts coming out that's inappropriate, like people will be removed. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to have about like 30, we'll call them agents inside, yeah. inside, just making sure that everything is, um, you know, going the right way. We understand that this is like a, a you know, this is a big step. And, you know, I, I know the reaction because it's called the club, but, you know, honestly, how I like to think about it is, you know, God is, is everything in terms of like, God is dancing. God is fun. God is also deliverance. God is also healing. God wants to save his people. And so we're trying to like create a space that encapsulates, you know, like all of who God is, you know, it's like there's sometimes in our generation, you know, like well, obviously we love church. I go to church all the time. I mean, well, yeah, that's, but <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> go to church I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, for some of my other brothers and sisters, um, again, this is not a, it's not a substitute for church. You still gotta go to church, but we also want to have, a hangout spot and i don't know if you guys know how guys have noticed but there's been a humongous drop off of youth and young adults in the churches 
even in my church, I, we don't have a young yeah. adult ministry, and we're trying to build one. But the like, people start coming back to church when life gets hard in their thirties and forties, you know. But that, you know, that little gap, like That's that true. twenty, to like twenty nine type area, you know. Uh, so our goal is to, you know, and like show people, hey, like, you know, being with God is a good time. It's fun. It's freeing. It's community. But it's also important because you have to live a righteous life. And, you know, being plugged in and tapped in with other pastors and, and different organizations and stuff like that, like, um, we, we really do think um, that we, like, one thing that God was telling me was that this is going to spread like a wildfire. Yeah. Um, and these spaces will, will, will open up. Um, and it's just, again, same God, different con- context of, what, of, of the way he's doing it. And, um, and also, like, you know, like if I if I'm with if I'm with my wife and it's a Saturday night, you know, and I know I can't go anywhere else, you know, like I know, you know, how knowing that there's a space open for me to go fellowship, um in inside a community with like minded minds is it's 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 really a blessing. And it's something that we want because my wife and I'll be like, Oh, it's a Saturday night. What are we gonna do? We're driving around, you know, we don't we don't believe in going to uh clubs or even like some, you know, Latin clubs. We just kinda like, you know, these these are places of sin. You know, so we're like, dang, like, what are we, what are we gonna do? You yeah. know, we don't have that, we don't have that many friends. You know, because yeah. the community is, is 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 not that big out here. Yeah. So we're like, oh shoot, so yeah, that's the heart. Man, that's beautiful. Thank thank you for sharing that and being open for us to call. I mean, I hope, I hope this discourse can send an example to people that you know we were on here and and discussing and before we before we pass judgment it was Mm -hmm. like man let's exercise the scriptures they may never they may not even respond back but at least we get their side of of the story and honestly you you really change not that i i actually had had the most positive perspective but (laughs) not that you changed my perspective but you gave me uh, a lot more not only perspective but i but i believe in what you guys are doing and so and so uh it's it's refreshing to hear someone who has so much intentionality but Mm. but spiritual maturity to be connected to a church and a pastor Mm -hmm. and also and all be serving in your youth ministry but also trying to solve an issue which which i agree it does exist uh within the kingdom of god right now and even exists in more of a uh, of a a city component that you guys are in and so man uh for uh i got two last questions and we'll and we'll and we'll let you get off Number one, are you guys established five hundred one c three, or how are you guys doing that? You charge to come in, or or uh, I don't have an opinion on it, but I'm just have the question. Um, eventually, you for eventually, profit or it, just kind of event yeah. right? Yeah, right now it's event right. Um, okay. We're charging fifteen dollars for a ticket. Nice. Um, we're eventually. I mean, if someone doesn't have the money, we have a donation option where they, if they can just give one dollar, they can give a ticket. Because we yeah. don't want somebody to not experience the community just because they don't have fifteen dollars, but um, we eventually want to get to a place. I mean, it's a lot. You have to get it with somebody and build it. So, eventually, if we can, if we can have sponsors like church sponsoring the movement, and we have a, a nonprofit, you know, because we're just trying to make sure. Cause we're trying to do it once a month. So, with the money that we make here, we're, it's going to go right back into making the next one next month, and so. Yeah. We're hopefully trying to like keep this alive. And so Yeah. Know, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of charging people, but it, you know, there's no other way to do it for us right now. Oh, I mean you have to pay lease and or rent and you know, pay for yeah, everything yeah. on the front end. I get that. I so it's let, super yeah, if I hear from you it's it's your heart it's your long term heart to set up a five oh one C three. Yeah. Okay. Well I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for you guys to set up a five oh one C three. I'm gonna cover the oh, charges wow. for that. Wow. Okay. So you got you got me on board with you guys. And so um, we'll connect after this. I'll make sure you get covered. I'll get you with one of my lawyers. We'll get you guys set up as a 501c3 so that after December 31st or you you definitely could get it set up. I'm running by then. But whatever you want to do after that, that's my gift to you guys. I believe in what you guys are doing. And so. um, uh, (laughs) That's his wife. wife. for me. (laughs) So I had to t- chime in. She was yeah, like, what? I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, we, man, you got us believing in you. We're, I'm going to share your stuff here on this podcast. We'll connect afterwards. My word is my bond, so we'll follow up. We can get started this week for you guys. You can name it whatever you want to name, but we'll cover that. And then uh, lastly, 
was I had a second question, but I forgot about it because my first response took longer than I was hoping for. But uh, I guess I uh, what was the last thing that I was going to say? Um, well, I can't remember. If I have the question, I will text it to you because I have your number. Do you got? Oh, that was the. Se- I have the second question. After December thirty first, you got, will you guys drive out to Rancho Cucamonga? Come on the podcast, you and your wife. Tell us what the experience was like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, man. You guys take care. I'll text you when I hang up, and we'll we'll be connected. All right, sounds good. Thank you for having us on. Absolutely, brother. Thank you, man. Peace. Right. Bye. Oh, this was fun. Yeah. Pretty right. wild, bro. Yeah. Whoa. Pretty wild. Bro, yeah, how, did we right. come come how did we get here? That's where dreams come true. How did we get here? I you just blessed them. They're yeah. crushing yeah. right. yeah. sure. See, like I knew going was a yeah. good idea in the first place. <laughs> come on, Nancy. <laughs> Oh, even before we talk, I text the girls. I text the girls. I was like, "Yo, we about to go to this." And then my crazy. girls are like, "All right, I want to go on stage next time. There's, it is an event. I want to encourage all y'all from Beloved to go." Right. right. I just want to say, like, I want to say, if he listens to this, I get so inspired. Yeah. By man, kids cool. like that, or just people like when that. When he said general. he was 22, my jaw dropped. And he's I would have thought, thought he was like 28, 29. Yeah. By the way, he was articulating yeah. his thoughts. Yeah. He's sharp. He's he's deep. He's thinking through. He's wrestling. He's doubting, but having faith. Yeah. I, it's just really crazy when you I don't wasn't have that all at 22. the. Oh no, no way! Like no, that. you weren't. Like <laughs> yeah, no, you were not. At 22, <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah, I was not. I was thinking. Bro, we'll talk offline. I have yeah. an idea. Okay. Anyway. No, yeah. yeah. Me, me, <laughs> that's why I told him you have no but idea who you just got on a call. No, 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 no. He has no idea. He has no idea. I have, I'll just say this. I have a friend. Uh, he was like the co-founder of Jabberwockies yep. and um, mm-hmm. the kin- the Kinjas, right? Yeah. He just started a, like a gathering in LA mm-hmm. every Monday because kind of like him, he's like, yo, like all the creative homies, all the entertainers, everyone in Hollywood and dancers, they're not going to church. So they have like 50 people gathering on Monday nights and mm. he doesn't know what to do with this right now. Yeah. He's just, so I was like, mm. man, people like him, wow. come on the Can pod, I, yeah. Yeah. let them share their heart. Like, yo, no one's reaching to people. Yeah. Cool. You know what I mean? And let but, everyone yeah. decide for themselves whether yeah. they think that's appropriate, not appropriate or whatever. Yeah. And Obviously, I was I was ready to lean in him a way a lot harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. once he started <laughs> talking, started. I was like, uh, you know, like he's journaling and he's yeah. I can take the name off. I can so genuine, open, authentic. You know? Hold yeah. on, let me go to my prayer journal. Yeah, yeah. that's wholesome. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't. <laughs> yeah. You can't. What do nothing you gonna about bomb on so he What are you gonna say? God, I'm Wrong. Sorry, Lord no, you can't say that. No, hey. God told you that. No, but I lead with criticism, but I'm also open, and so I appreciate that because I'm sitting there like. Is yeah. your opinion changed right now? I'm way yeah. more positive about it now, For sure. in a good way. I'm not. I'm not critical. <laughs> the critical bone is gone. It's, That's it's, what I'm saying. So you, you, yeah, you, my, you are you? Like, I didn't have an opinion. Obviously, we don't know what like what's yeah, going to happen. Our pre-conversation after, but, but, was I mean, uh, an you know. opinion based off simulating c- scenarios Assumption. and stuff. So yeah, yeah after hearing you know, it, I'm like is. wholesome. But yeah. a lot of people who are making those negative comments don't have. What 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 we did, which is, yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah. Let's go straight and find out what the heart is, Dang. and let's try to figure out sort of what the motive is in the first place, because yeah. that answered all the questions for that sure. we had. We talked for an hour and a half, and then we were it's able to hear. We're like, yeah. oh, okay, well, and we're I, good. Yeah, and, and I was feeling more. I was feeling more, not in like a super way, but I was feeling convicted, talking, thinking. I obviously it's a podcast. So I'm going to be critical, but sure. but if they just were in Nashville, then I'd feel like, oh, they're far. We're not going to have any yeah. effect. But I know sure. the size of our ministry, and so I'm like, I could, you know, we could really be responsible for making or breaking <laughs> these individuals. Like I yeah. could be so critical that it could decimate them because they're not far from yeah. us. And so I'm like, before I finish my judgment. Let me try to reach yeah. out to these. And even if we couldn't have, I would have still had the conversation and come back on this podcast and said either, hey, it's what I thought. I still have concerns or whatever. Or to say, hey, I want to backtrack. Uh, I think you guys should in- should support what they're doing, yada, yada, yada. Because mm-hmm. right. I think I think not only the, the podcast, but but the, our ministry and even Will and Orange Catholic, between all of us, like we do carry a lot of influence in the Christian space. Yeah. And so a, a highly critical could have easily... Even more so, like, Toward apart. yeah, we hear your side, but man, yeah, Adam Mesa and Will Chung and Abundant, like, they said this. So, I really wanted to 
give them a space. Hey, man, share your thoughts before we finalize yeah. our own heart and judgment towards it, whether we think it's good, like not like our opinion matters. But when you understand that you're in a position of authority, it, yeah. it can carry weight. And so but you want to be that, mindful of that. You I think know? it's also important to remember when you're talking about these young people who have these dreams and they want to glorify God and they want to create these mm-hmm. environments. Mm-hmm. It's so easy for us who have been in the game for so long Same. to just sit there and say, it's not going to happen for you yeah. Yeah. or come alongside them and say, your heart is right. You know, uh, um, God can do amazing things with young people. And um, all you need is a little accountability. And even it, they have the accountability, but to even say, instead of saying from the old, from the old farts over here, like, Eh, yeah. You're young. That's the problem. We, we we sometimes tell these people like, oh, yeah. you're young. You don't know all of the things, which is, I mean, guilty. I was saying some of that stuff earlier in this podcast. Yeah. But then he shut me yeah. up. But he's like, yeah. no, I have a plan. Let me tell you what it is. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, instead of me being critical. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I don't think there's any harm in openly criticizing something yeah. and wrestling through whether yeah. you think it's right or not. Um, I, I, I think, you know, I. I think that's fine. I think when you have a, pos- when you, but then you go further and you have a position of play, it's like of authority yeah. or whatever. Now you got to move deeper to go. Let's really try to understand this yeah. before you cat, be- before you cast a judgment, which I think we all did. And even we started playing the devil's advocate. Hey, let's find yeah. in the middle. And yeah. let's ho- and we said, let's uh, hope that he's yes, doing it. Yes. And it's like, we started at a point, we started that to say, this could be really bad or he could really have a great heart with this. Yep. And then as he went deeper and he's like, man, we got prayer rooms. We're going to have board game rooms. Yeah. Like, like, so, Oh, okay. I see. I see how he's processing. And then like I talked about at the beginning, like we as older individuals who maybe have resources mm. and we have platforms and other stuff like that, you know, we could either tell the next generation, get gritty on your own, um, mm. you know, do this on your own, go be a self-made person or, or talk to you and say, Hey, what's your greatest need right now? Yeah. Well, we, you know, yeah. we're doing through Eventbrite yeah. and I hope this, and I hope that it's like, you know what? We're going to do, yeah. we're, I'm believing you. This is enough, hopefully enough belief to give you a little breath of fresh air through those negative comments, so good. give you a little encouragement to know there are older people out here who believe in what you're doing yeah. and, and hope the best for what you're doing. For you sure. Know? And as the resident critic earlier on, <laughs> now that, that, now that energy is shifting because I'm saying, okay, yeah. if a pastor in Rancho Cucamonga got, went out of his way or in our way, whatever, you know, however you view it to go reach out have dialogue around this either way. Now, the only remnant that's still living in my head and my heart is this does and should apply pressure to the local church, regardless to mm-hmm. either support it, yeah. get behind it. Right. They don't need to, but at least should apply pressure to investigate if this is a movement, right? Cause that's more of a marketing pitch, but if it does become a real movement, yeah. churches need yeah. to, cause I'm just a proponent that the church is the answer to, sure. to cover. Well, better believe, let, you know, let's do a hypothetical. If 2,000 kids started showing up, giving their lives to Christ, Across you know, every pastor would show up All like a, a vulture and a sure. vampire For sure. trying exactly. to sink their teeth yep. in that. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. they, oh, the all problem. of a sudden they'd be uh-huh. like, yeah. uh-huh. how can we turn this into a Friday night weekly yeah. fellowship? Exactly. You know? exactly. Yeah. That goes back to what I was, what we were talking about earlier is like, the fivefold. Yeah, this dude is yeah. clearly not a teacher shepherd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> He's yeah, an yeah. apostolic sure. evangelist who's yeah. like, I got, I got a vision. Yes. Most, if he wasn't like in a traditional church, not Bishop Omar, because he's an OG, right? They would have been like, no, you got to sit down, mm-hmm. invite all your friends to Wednesday night Bible study, right? But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the fact that I hear guys like that and the way that you were talking to them, I was like, man, we got to fuel kids like this. Like, yeah. Yeah. you're already there. You got this vision from God. It might be crazy and different. <laughs> And we, we want to walk with you, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but he, the way he was answering, I was like, this kid thought this through. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. This fool. I may not be able to pay for your 5013C, but I'll say it on camera. I will sponsor 10 young adults who oh, want to go. Whoa. Whoa. 10 young adults. Hey, hey that's $15 a ticket. Yeah. Wow. Wow. He's donating. Hey, I will. <laughs> my right. word is my bond. Reach it out is, to me. <laughs> hey, I'll connect you. I'll connect script. you with the homie in LA. That's a Jabberwocky. Yeah. Hey, connecting hey, with a Jabberwocky. That's both. a big deal. Oh, he'll come on for sure. Well, your boy, yeah. yeah I met ben him. Will come on. You weren't there. Oh, a young guy. I met him. Yeah. Ben will and have him. them chop it up, yeah, talk yeah, it through yeah. what they're thinking. Yeah. Well, I want, yeah, I, I want, I want, I, I want them definitely. 
we, yeah. we do it on a week that you're with us. Well, yeah, I want yeah, them to come yeah. and share with us yeah. what, what it was like. And I, and Nancy be here. So that's the thing. When you go mm -hmm. in, in, our, in, our, <laughs> in our staff talks, don't bring it up. Like, yeah. let's try to get him right after. Hold it close to your chest. Like, don't tell us in Slack yeah. what it was like or naturally, oh, like, so just don't hold talk it. About it. Don't talk about it at all. Okay. And just and Until just they hold come it. On the show. Get them the yeah, first. Yeah. Get okay. them the first the Thursday. Try to get them the yeah. first. I mean, obviously, if it's critical, we don't want to embarrass. So don't do that part. Right. But no, like, no, no, no. I just right. mean like I want your natural, you know, uh, you know, reaction. I don't want to say, oh yeah, you told us this thing, Nancy, right? Right. Like I don't yeah. want to know about it till they come on and then you share about it and stuff okay. like. Bring some of your friends. Well, but make getting... sure you go to church first. Go to church first. I have to work. I will sponsor your. You'll be good. He said it starts at nine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ours will so be done at, uh, late, at like eight. An hour. Yeah, you just go no. straight. <laughs> Ours will be done at eight. But this is part work, so I'll let you slip out hey! a little bit and go, and go party. I'm getting paid to, getting go, paid to go party. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you go. Split your shit though. <laughs> we got, no, we got time. here. We got here about it, and then we'll have them. <laughs> My boss. I think we should have your boy in. sooner than that. Yeah, I can and Kev and Kevin. Yeah, we should do a food a food thing with them here on here, like a ramen thing. That's fire. Cool. I just saw your podcast with it. You did great, man. You guys it. were eating food. His, his boy, the one he's talking about, he's the, he's. I told Sanaz, one's the one's a restaurateur and then the other's a dancer, or choreographer, right? Mm -hmm. They Heck have yeah. a podcast where they um, talk about faith, I believe, right? Or yeah. business? No, they business just faith? they had a bunch of different podcasts, but they started a new one called Good Service, and it's about faith. And they do it over food, so they get oh, like a whole meal, fire. and they review the sandwiches first, and then they kind of interview. So cool, I listen to it. You oh, yeah, BTL X. You're so oh, thoughtful, service. bro. You're so thoughtful. You hey, always bro. have such good wisdom. You know, I listen to Will, it. Will, it's Will, cool. it's so crazy. It's Will. the cigars. Let's do this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this real quick, real quick, to comically relieve this whole situation too. Yeah, we got to close this up. Go ahead. I think Will can pass for 21 years old. It's what true. is the youngest? What is the how how does he look? Twenty one. Yeah, I think he right, passed for twenty one. Twenty three. Yeah, I want to see my eye wrinkles. You can pass for twenty one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. How old are you? Thirty four. Thirty four. Yeah. I feel okay. Like I, I thought you were like forty one though, because you're so wise. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I was well, say twenty. I would say like twenty nine. He's so wise. He could go for twenty nine. I thought you were like forty one, but I say you could pass for twenty one. Wait, oh, you're hold wisdom. on, I don't <laughs> That was a backhand like, where are we compliment. going with this? <laughs> I didn't know. No, I, you're just so wise. You're just so wise. No, he was saying like, because you share such good information, yeah. he thought you were older. I appreciate that. A resident know. vampire is Alex as well. Alex is like 48, but he yeah. looks like he's like 30. Alex, I, I know, Alex I and I are only a day apart wow. in okay. age. I normally get 42, 43. That's <laughs> why I like, assumed it when I'm in circles. Yeah. It's your official. Yeah. yeah. And uh -uh. it's your, your Not status. the way I look. It's normally like oh, because the knowledge. Uh, oh. Not knowledge, but yeah, maybe Wisdom. like it's the position wait, wait. I come so, in in a room. So, you know, is, like, so, so should I be everybody offended? Everybody gets shocked on me in my 30s. Should I be offended yeah. that people think that I'm younger than I am? No, no. Yeah, if should. it's a wisdom thing? No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't carry my wallet around a lot. So like when I go to spaces where you need to get carded, they don't let me in. I'm like, yo, please. I'm like, dog, I, I, got, I got four three kids. kids. Yeah. Like, look at this photo. Let me in. like, you could have started at 14. I know. All right, everybody. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Peace.